안녕하세요. 김용진 원장입니다. Greetings, same doctor, Kim y o n g j i n In today's online master course, I'm going to provide an explanation on digital scanners. Currently, digital dentistry is all the hype in the dental field. By trend, it refers to something that once was popular but is no longer. To give you an example of what used to be popular would be impression material with the introduction of intraoral scanners, impression material is largely being replaced. In the past, in the dental field, impression materials were used very frequently. Yes, some people still do use it. But with introduction of scanner, the percentage of using impression materials have gone down. With digital dentistry, this is one of the changes that we've come across. Based on my understanding, many dentists have tried to make a digital transformation by introducing intraoral scanning to dental clinics. In order to do digital dentistry, you need input and output devices, and one of the most prominent input devices is intraoral scanner. This is my dental clinic. I currently use three intraoral scanners. More so than taking impression, I do scan much more frequently. I routinely use scanners, and patient satisfaction is very good, and you can use your dental clinic very cleanly. Assistants are very satisfied with this as well. In order to use intraoral scanners well, first you need to have an understanding of scanned files. You need to also understand the different types of intraoral scanners and how they work, the pros and cons, in order to really understand and utilize intraoral scanners clinically. I'm going to give you a brief example of scanned files. When we turn on music using computer or different digital devices, various types of music files can be turned on. The extension files may be different, but you can still play them. When you do 3D intraoral scanning, scanned files can be of various formats. One of the most prominent formats are DCM, STL, and PLY files. First, let's look at DCM file. It is slightly different from CT DICOM file. This is dental color mesh. If you use TRIO scanner, you can get DCM files. There is a dedicated viewer for it. It's in color, its capacity is very light, and next is STL file. It stands for Standard Triangle Language. You can look at it with a window viewer. It's not in color. It's black and white, the capacity is light. In terms of universality, the STL file is used. The PLY stands for Polygon File. It is very compatible with CAD and it is shown in color, but the file capacity is large. s e r e c type of scanners, Prime Scanner or Omnicam, produce PLY files. These are three most prominent file formats. The extension is different, but the principle of scanned files are mostly similar. If you take a closer look, it consists of many dots. It consists of dots and lines that connect them. These lines are what we call as mesh. The mesh are connected and form reconstruction of the subject. The principle of intraoral scanner, like TRIOS, is that it applies light, and in the area where there's reflection, dots are made, and these dots are connected. Unnecessary dots are removed, and what is considered important is left, and triangle mesh is formed by adding these mesh. A volumetric reconstruction of subject can be formed. This is the principle of intraoral scanner. In intraoral scanner, naturally, there comes a light. If you look at the scan files that have been generated using intraoral scanner, there is point cloud. Light is applied, and what is reflected is 
recognized by the scanner. This is called a point cloud or point vertex. Point cloud refers to what is dispersed and scattered. What is unnecessary is removed and in the end, you get facet and surface. These are also referred to as mesh. If you take a closer look, you can see what kind of information that is available. The numbers here is the positional information of axis X, Y, and Z. What is marked is shown in color. You can use different colors and the three numbers reflect the position on the axis X, Y, and Z. What makes an intraoral scanner a good intraoral scanner? An intraoral scanner that does not generate useless point clouds can be said as good intraoral scanner. Another requirement is for the intraoral scanner to connect the remaining dots quickly and accurately to form triangular facet and mesh. That would be a good scanner. In that sense, making point cloud swiftly. That varies depending on hardware of the intraoral scanner. Forming accurate to mesh and facet is governed by the software. You have to have a good intraoral scanner with excellent hardware and software. These need to be in harmony. Let me show you the five most popular intraoral scanners in the market. Prime Scan from Densplay Serona, 3Shape from Trios, and i700 from Medit. These scanners are highly popular in the market these days. Let's classify them. It can be divided as shown. You may think it has been divided into whether it's expensive or cheap, but it's actually based on how it works. The scanner works largely in two ways confocal laser way and optical triangulation method. The TRIOS from 3Shape is the most prominent confocal laser type scanner. The principle is as shown in simple terms. In the case of optical triangulation scanning, it's the same as how our eyes perceive a subject. It registers light and the image is constructed based on that. In the case of confocal laser method, the focal distance is adjusted in varying ways and many images are taken and this is used for reconstruction. The confocal laser type scanner adjusts the focal length automatically and takes different image layers. First, if you are to assume that we're scanning a tooth, cuspid tips will be scanned first, followed by cervical area and gingiva. In that sense, different layers will be registered. There's a part that moves. In order to get image of varying distances, a component within the scanner moves. That's how scan files are generated. However, in the case of optical triangulation method, just as how we perceive subjects with our eyes, by moving the scanner with our hands, the focal length changes. In the case of confocal laser scanning within the scanner, there is a component that moves in order to change focal length. That's why it's heavy. It does not get affected by the surface characteristics of the subject. In the case of optical triangulation method, it does not have such component and it has good durability, does not break easily, and it's light. However, depending on the surface trait of the subject, the scan quality can vary. There may not only be natural teeth, but there can be also metal restorations. So in the case of optical triangulation scanning, it does not read the light accurately. The scanning capability falls. In the case of convocal laser method, it may be heavy, but the skin quality is good even for metal restorations. And as for optical triangulation method, it may be light, but in the case of metal restoration, you need to spray powder. Next, I'm going to show you prominent confocal laser type scanners that are different from optical triangulation scanners. Let's compare TRIOS 4 and PrimeScan. 
prime scan is 524 gram. It's very heavy. As for Trios, although it has a component that moves, and it's still 345 gram, it's very light, and you can experience less fatigue in your hands. I've talked about principle of scanner up until now, and based on that, I've talked about how to differentiate different scanners. So let's talk about scanning strategy. When we take an image of a certain scenery, if we use a wide angle camera, that would lead to better result. That is the principle of model scanner. Model scanner takes overall image of a fixed subject and takes an overall image of the subject just like using a wide-angle lens. But intraoral scanners can't do that, so it takes the different images of the tooth and it moves. These images are stitched together and the areas that are overlapping are utilized to come up with this overall image. As we do scanning, inevitably there will be a distortion. If the distance between where we start scanning and end scanning is significant, or if there is a significant curvature in the arch, then distortions can become worse. As shown when we compare wide-angle camera image and intraoral scanner image, there are slight distortions with the intraoral scanned images. This is inevitable. Hence, when we do full arch prosthodontic treatment, rather than using intraoral scanner, it is said to be more favorable to use impression material and do model scanning. As a result of this, there are multiple scanning strategies. Among them, there are this kind of strategy. It's called the wiggle wiggle strategy. From lingual side, it scans the lingual side first and it also scans occlusal surface with certain characteristics. It moves between buccal side and lingual side, and this is emphasized by trios. This is to minimize distortion of scans. If intraoral scanning is necessary that exceeds midline, or if full arch scanning is required, such strategy should be utilized. Then, is a scanning strategy that important? The software of scanners have improved significantly, and so has the hardware. There is a research that have analyzed different scanning strategies and looked at accuracies of it. To give you a conclusion, there is no major difference. Up until recently, people have talked about wiggle wiggle scan, conventional framework scan, and conventional framework scan, plus cross scan. If you do this, it might be of little help, but then in the overall big picture, it doesn't really make big difference. But still, you should be aware of basic scanning strategies. As mentioned, the distortions are bound to happen with intraoral scans. In order to minimize such, when scanning full arch, we need to have a certain strategy. On the palatal side, where it's even, the scanner does not really perceive it well. If something is missing, then you will not be able to get an accurate scan. In the case of hard palate, rugae serves as a characteristic, but in the case of even soft palate area, then a lot of distortions can happen. Therefore, if you use flowable resin and provide the trait, you may be able to get better scans. By adding flowable resin and making a rugae form, or any kind of characteristic, your scanner will be able to match the images much better and stitch it nicely. Next, in the case of scanning fully edentulous patient, I do not use direct scanning strategy for such cases. As mentioned by Trios, if you use these strategies, it can be possible, but actually it's being done on model. But in clinically speaking, you need to factor in the patient's tongue movement and cheek movement as well as saliva, so it's not easy to scan like this. What I want to mention in this context is that you need to reverse the scan. In the case of fully edentulous patient, do you take impression the traditional way? After that, 
you would scan the scan body. When I talked about the principle of scan, I've talked about making point and connecting them to come up with a facet. To give you a more example and explanation on scan file, there is a normal vector in scan file. You can reverse the external and internal surface of scan. Let's assume we are scanning the Yoda image from outside. If we reverse it, the positive image will change to negative image. We refer to this as scan reversal. For instance, when we come across these kind of patients, it's not easy to scan using intraoral scanners. You take impression or use impression material to get the closed mouth impression of the denture that the patient used. With that, you can take impression of the inner surface, and for outer surface, you can do mounting. VD and interarch relations can be set. The scanned denture can be reversed once again. Intraoral trios is used to scan the inner and outer surfaces of the impression taken from the denture. Program is used to reverse this area. Just like pouring stone, you get a reversed image like this. If you reverse it once again, denture contour is generated and you can get the results you get with mounting a fully dentulous model with digital dentistry rather than scanning everything 100%. If scanning strategy seems to be difficult, by understanding the scan file, you can utilize these methodologies. Because of time constraint, I was not able to explain everything about principles of scanners. However, if you participate in digital master course along with hands-on course prepared by Austin and actually work on scan data using different programs, I believe you'll be able to get a much better sense in using intraoral scanners. Thank you.